My name is Stuart Keeler, and I'm going to be talking about springback. Over the centuries that we have been using sheet metal, the problem has always been one of tears and fractures. But we've learned to minimize these through looking at the deformation through circle grids, forming limit diagrams, uh, through virtual forming, and other technologies. Now the number one problem is the dimensional stability of variations deviating from the specification. And that comes from the elastic stresses, not the plastic deformation that we're used to, but from the elastic stresses which originate in the atomic cube right here, which is the smallest structure of metal. These atoms are in a certain array, their distance they are in balance, and they like to stay that way. When you start to deform metal and you start to put a force on it, the first deformation that starts is the elastic deformation where you're starting to spread these dimensions here on your atomic cube. And this creates the elastic modulus of the steel, also called the Young's modulus. Now normally this modulus is so strong, 30 million for steel for example, that it comes right up this axis right here. I've elongated this axis so that we can have some tip in here so we can see what happens to this modulus as we work. Well, as you pull the metal here, it, you climb up. When you release the forces, it snaps back down. At one point, however, you reach a distance where you have both elastic and now you start with permanent plastic deformation. And this is often dictated by a line which is, goes parallel to the elastic mo uh, modulus, offset by 2 tenths percent. You come up here and you put that mark and that is the yield strength. And if you take this down straight, this is the elastic portion of what you have in the metal up here, and this is your plastic motion, uh, um, deformation. So you can see that you have a major portion of deformation all tied up there. Another way to determine the yield strength is to do a line which is offset to tenths percent and take that line and draw it upwards and where it intersects this modulus line uh, is the yield stress. Other countries take a 0.05% strain, draw a vertical line, and where that crosses, that's the yield strength. These two ways are about the same for most of the metals, but that's how you determine the yield strength. This is in the elastic region, now this has the plastic region plus the elastic region. You don't get rid of the elastic region when you're under force. Now the spring back, fortunately for us, is proportional to the yield strength. So if we have a yield strength of 25 KSI and we have a certain amount of spring back, we double to a higher strength metal and we come up to 50 KSI, and now we have doubled the amount of spring back. So as the steel gets stronger, spring back increases, your residual stresses are increasing, and you have to pay more attention to how you correct these things and get back to the dimensional specifications that the customer wants. Now, before the advanced high strength steels, we had 25 KSI, which is in this case would be an AKDQ steel or a mild steel, which is the global definition. Uh, this is the high strength low alloy steels, uh, 100 KSI. 
you have four times the amount of spring back. So if you're making a bend over here, you had made two to three degrees of bend spring back. Now you're talking eight to 12. Now comes the advanced high strength steels, which number one is the Martensite, the Martensitic steels, which in this case has a yield strength of 200 KSI. Very, very strong. And now this is uh, four times, eight times what you would find with a mild steel, and you're having 16 to 24 degrees of potential bending and spring back. And that is a tremendous problem that you have in creating a stamping to specification. Now, that is determining at this point here at the yield strength. But we do not make very many stampings that all have no deformation in them, just the sheet of metal. And so when you start to deform them, to stretch them, to pull them over punches or punches pushing them down, you now have an increase in the strength of the material. The yield strength increases, but the elastic portion goes along with it because you're adding more force, you're adding more elastic stresses. And now instead of this amount of spring back in the stamping, you have this much. So you have increased your spring back so part of the stamping that maybe over here has a, a certain amount, more over here, less over here, and now you have a distribution of spring back which then has to interact until it reaches a balanced condition. Well, that would be nice if everybody had A to B, okay? It would be very nice. However, there are things that where you go that you have sampings going up to C. Uh, you might have a strain gradient which goes up or down as changes in the dye or changes in lubrication or the temperature or the speed or whatever and so you're bouncing back and forth up in here. And this is also a reason where you get this deformation from a gradient which is a sharp localization of deformation, often on a character line or something like that. So now we have this from it, and you can see why this spring back is a real problem now because of this elastic stresses, which we can't measure and we can't see them. Well, it even depends upon the modulus of elasticity uh, for um, steel, we have a 30 million and, um, modulus, and we have this amount of spring back. Uh, for a aluminum or a non-ferrous model, which is one third uh, the uh, modulus at 10 million, has now three times the amount of spring back. And so the spring back depends even on what material you are going to use. Number one headache, as far as I'm concerned today, is spring back. And we're going to have to find ways to compensate for that. Thank you.